What's up everybody, VHE Tutor here. Welcome back. And this is an exciting one because Valve released a 25th anniversary Half-Life update. I'm super excited about it. Uh, I was gonna make a video kind of just going over it, but I figured I would just enjoy it and let everyone else uh, make the content for it. But I decided that I will make a tutorial for Funk Vehicles since they added the entity into Half-Life from Counter-Strike. And the Funk Vehicle is actually really easy to implement. Um, all you have to do is copy the entities into your FGD file. And then it's very similar to the other um, train entities. You need to have an origin and some path tracks. But other than that, you're pretty much good to go. And as you can see, I'm driving around in my very crudely made truck that I took from a prefab. Um, so let me show you how to do it. Okay, here we are in Jackhammer, and the first thing we want to do is add the, um, the Funk Vehicle to our FGD. So if you don't know, if you don't remember where your FGD lives, we can go into the Options, and we'll go to Game Profiles. And I'm using a slightly modified Half-Life FGD, so here it tells me my file path. I'm gonna, I already have the folder open, so I'll bring it over here. And then I'm going to open it in uh, Notepad++. So we have it here. I already added it, but basically um, in the description, I have a link to a paste bin, which has the Funk Vehicle um, entities here all in the text. So you can literally copy this right here, right click copy. And then I opened my Half-Life FGD and I scrolled down to about mm, line 1300-ish. And I just tried to go um, alphabetically. This is where I put mine. So what I did was um, I went under Funk Train, found the very last. Um, each new line starts at at solid class. So I found the uh, the end of it. I went hit enter a couple times, boom, pasted it, and then I saved it. Um, but I'm going to control Z that because I didn't make any changes. Here I have my Funk vehicle. There we go. Now. You'll want to restart your editor for this, but I already have mine, so um, we'll pretend that I just uh, restarted. And now we're pretty much off to the races. Um, and so what you could do, you could build your own vehicle from scratch, um, but there's a lot of prefabs out there, uh, vehicle prefabs that I that you can use. And I actually built this crude truck based off of a prefab that I found of an SUV, and I made it into a truck because it's cooler. Um, but I'll guide you through it with, um, a train prefab. So let me bring this over here. I found this on the whole half-life by going to the vault and just searching a bunch of things. But, um, I searched truck or, uh, I think I searched vehicle. Yeah, I searched vehicle, found this vehicle prefabs. So I downloaded it and it is a uh, RMF file. So we can just open it up in hammer. And this is also based off of uh, the Core 303's uh, tutorial here that he updated for Half-Life. So we're kind of working off that. I will link this in the description as well. So um, let's go back into Jackhammer and we'll start from scratch basically. So open the prefabs. Uh, fab and it was vehicles.rmf. Here we are. And so this is the one that I want to use. We're just going to make this drivable. So I clicked on it and make sure you don't have ignore groups checked. If you have ignore groups, it won't select properly. So I'm going to control C, copy that, bring it into our map here. And so what's important here is the direction that your vehicle is facing to begin with. Um, if we look here, it is pointing to the left uh, on purpose. Um, the front of your vehicle will be pointed to the left, so design it that way. So I'm going to paste, and here we have our train, and it is already facing to the left, so that's good. I'm going to check to see where it's laying on the floor. All right, or on the ground, I should say. Here, better visibility in the grid. Um, 
But what we got to do now is find out the exact origin of it. And it's pretty easy to find out. There is a little X right here that kind of shows you um, where the origin is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search the origin texture. And I'm just going to create a little block right in the center of the origin here. It doesn't have to be big at all. And uh, I believe... Now this is tough because I kind of have to guesstimate where the origin is um, on the height. But I think it's around here. Like it, it could be because the height of the vehicle goes up to here. It could be somewhere in here. But I'm going to just base it around this here. Um, and I'm going to hit enter. And this is where the path tracks are going to work off of when we uh, actually turn it into a vehicle. And it also will base the height of the wheels um, or whatever you have here. These are tracks, I guess. Um, so now that I got my origin selected, I'm going to hold control and click onto the vehicle itself. And now we have everything selected, the vehicle and the uh, uh, origin. And so what I'm going to do is control T and I'm going to go to funk vehicle. And we can see in the bottom right hand corner here what the length and the width is. And it also shows us in the 2D view here. So the length is 256 and the width is 128. That's important here. Um, and we're going to want to name this. Well, I'll just call it uh, train. Doesn't matter really as long as it's something that uh, you can remember. Doesn't even actually have to be. It just needs to be able to target it. So length of vehicle 256 and with the vehicle 128 that ha that's actually a happy coincidence because um when i created the uh, this truck the length and width was not perfect but it might be this by default um cuz that's the size of the train we got lucky there um and so first stop target this is important this is where your train is going to spawn so i'm going to call it train p1 as in train path 1 sound um, you can kind of experiment with these. Uh, I'm just going to go with car one for now. It, it sounds kind of buggy anyway. We got the length and the width, height above track. Um, we can see here, if we go from the origin. Uh, I'm just going to create a little block here and see what it says. So the origin is 15 units from the ground. So I think we want to put 15 units uh, height above track track i think that's correct we can we can test that um so initial speed we want that to be zero otherwise it's going to start just going on its own now speed so if we think of the running speed in half-life it's 320 units per second um and i like i like to go fast so what i'm going to do is i'm going to double the movement speed the running speed and make it 640 units per second that should be um plenty fast uh, you can decrease it if you want, but I like it because it's double the running speed. You know, you actually feel like you're in a vehicle. Acceleration, who wants to accelerate slow? I mean, we're having fun here, so I'm going to make it 8. But if you were, eh, maybe I'll make 7. But if you were trying to make something realistic, maybe you would uh, tone it down to like 4 or 5 or something. So damage on crush, if you want to do damage, uh, kind of like the um, blast pit sequence in Half-Life, uh, when you go down the giant elevator and you're on the... the train there um i'm gonna set this to 75 that's that's good damage to crush any um scientist or barneys um and should crush um any grunts within one to two ticks of damage so um volume i don't actually want this really loud uh it's kind of annoying so i'm gonna turn it to five and i think that's i think we went through everything all right so now what i'm gonna do i'm going to place a path track Directly on the ground here. Um, not in the ground, but on the ground. And I'm going to call this train P1. And next stop target is going to be train P2. And the second track, uh, path track is where it's going to be facing. So this next track um, determines where your funk vehicle faces. And the first one determines where it spawns. So it's going to spawn over here. And then, second one, not super important, really. Uh, just wherever direction you want. So this is train path 2. And we want this to target train path 1. So they, these two kind of go in a loop to each other. 
um, but this will allow us to drive the train. And now all we need to do is uh, search up the trigger texture, and we're going to create the control section for it. So wherever you want the player to be able to control the vehicle from is where you will place this. And so let's, I don't want the player to be able to control it from right side here. I kind of only want them in the driver's seat. That's me personally. So I'm going to kind of just limit it to here. That looks about good. Okay. And then control T. And we make it funk vehicle controls. And all we got to do is target the vehicle name. Super easy. I called it train. Um, so we'll save this. And we will compile it and test it out in game. All right, here we are in game. Going to reload the map. All right, so we can see that this has spawned over here. And it does look like it's doing a little bit of floating. Uh, can't quite explain that. Um, but we could uh, just lower the height above ground, honestly. But let's give it a test. And it's working. I'm just holding down forward. I'm not... Um, I'm not clicking and then letting go, because if you let go, it'll slow down. So I am just holding forward. There is the sound. See, the, the sound is, is, is pretty wonky. It uh, doesn't work quite right, so... Um, but otherwise, our vehicle works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Do height above track. Maybe we'll go 8. That looks good. I don't know why it's... That looks better. Alright, and there you have it. Funk vehicle. I showed you how to create a funk vehicle. It's pretty simple. You just take your, your train, your prefab, whatever, add an origin brush to it, make it a funk vehicle, add some track controls, and uh, add your path tracks, and you're literally off to the races in your vehicle. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Hope this was informative. Um, let's all rejoice with this 25th anniversary update. It is really cool. I like the fact that they added the wand menu and uh, made the HUD scale properly. Uh, it really makes you feel like you're playing the original Half-Life from 1998. So I really like that. And um, I will see you in the next one.